Throughout the years, I've used several programs to create UI elements, prototypes, and mockups. But I've come to rely on Adobe Illustrator more and more due to being loaded with features that help make UI design relatively easier. So sit back and enjoy today's tutorial where I'll be showing you how to create a circa thermostat UI doll design in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so jump into Illustrator and create a new document. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And I've set up the four following color swatches, which I'll be using throughout the tutorial. Once you create your new document, select the rectangle tool and just create a rectangle, which fills the artboard. And then just fill it with the first color in the color swatches panel, which is 1A, 1C, 2, 0. And then head straight over to the ellipse tool, which is shortcut L on the keyboard. And then just click anywhere within the artboard. And then we want to create an ellipse, which is roughly about 380 by 380 pixels. And then we just want to horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard. And I'm just going to give this a random color swatch just so we can see where it is. Next, we're going to add a few more ellipses to build up the layers of our shape. And the best way to do this is with the offset path tool. So first select the shape, then go to object path, offset path. And we want to offset the first path by around 20 pixels and then press OK. While the shape is still selected, press I on the keyboard for the color picker tool. And you just want to select the dark blue color from our swatches. Reselect the green ellipse and then go to object path offset path. And then we want to offset this path with a negative value, something around minus 60 pixels and then press OK. And again, following the same steps as last time, press on the keyboard and just color pick the dark blue color. While the shape is still selected, go to object path offset path. And then we just want to finally offset the last path by one pixel and then press OK. While the shape is still selected, select the fill color and we want to use a lighter shade of blue, something around 202328 and then press OK. And then finally select the remaining green ellipse and then change the solid fill to a gradient fill. Change the gradient type to a radial gradient then double click on the white color point, select the color palette, and then select the three lines in the top right hand corner and change this to RGB. And in the hex value, you want to enter 161719 and then press OK. And then on the right hand side, repeat the same process. But in the hex value, we want to use 171910C and then press enter. And then we have our radial gradient applied to our ellipse. Next, we're gonna create the slider part of the dial. So first off, select the ellipse with the gradient applied to it and go to edit copy and then go to edit paste in place. Change the fill color to any color, to something temporary and then swap over the solid fill to a stroke. Change the stroke weight to something around 50 points and then zoom in and resize the shape down so it sits roughly in the center with a space above it and below it so you can see the ellipse with the gradient applied it underneath and then we want to rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise once holding the shift key and it should snap into place and then press the letter c on the keyboard for the scissors tool and then we just want to select the top right anchor point and the bottom left anchor point. Select A on the keyboard for the direct selection tool and then select the bottom right part of the path and then hit the delete key which should cut the uh, ellipse in half. Select the part of the ellipse which is left over and then go to the stroke panel. If you don't see the stroke panel go to window and then stroke or you can use the shortcut control F10 and we just want to change the cap to a rounded cap. Next, change the solid stroke fill to a gradient fill by selecting the little gradient square underneath the color. Over in the gradient panel, we wanna make sure that the radial gradient is selected. 
And for the stroke, we want to select the middle icon, which will apply the gradient along the stroke. And then for the colors on the left color slider, we want to select our light blue color. And on the right color slider, we want to select our dark blue color. And then we should get the radial gradient starting from the middle mouse point and then going darker towards the edges. To create the little handle in our blue little slider area, zoom in and then select the ellipse tool, find the end of the path, hold down the Alt key and simply drag out a new ellipse. If you hold the Shift key, it will constrain the aspect ratio, giving you the perfect circle. Once you've created the circle, add a gradient fill. Again, using similar sort of colors, I'm just gonna choose a slightly darker color then make sure the ellipse is selected and go to edit copy then go to edit paste in place then just want to resize the duplicated ellipse and then just fill it using a darker blue color once you've completed the little slider we can now add a little glow to it firstly select the path and then go to effect stylize outer glow select the color and then select the color swatches within the color picker panel and you want to select the light blue color and then press ok change the opacity down to 30 percent and use blur somewhere around 20 pixels and then press ok and that should give you a nice blue glow to the slider next we're going to create the little lines which go around our ui dial i'm pretty sure these are called dibbers so first select the rectangle tool, which is shortcut M on the keyboard, and then simply drag out a small, thin vertical rectangle. While the rectangle is selected, hold down the shift key and select one of the ellipses. Loose the shift key and then reselect the ellipse and then the red stroke should go bold, indicating that this is the main object which is selected. And then using the alignment tools, you just wanna to select the horizontal align center and that will horizontally align the rectangle in line with the ellipse. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Once the dibber is in its place, then we're going to rotate the dibbers all the way around using the rotate tool. So first select the rectangle, select the rotate tool, which is shortcut R on the keyboard. And then you want to find the center of the ellipse. If you can't find the center, you can press control Y on the keyboard for outline mode and then the little x in the center marks the center of the ellipse press ctrl y again to come out of outline mode hold down the alt key and then simply click the left mouse button and this will bring up the rotate panel rotate the dibbers by around 15 degrees and instead of pressing ok what you want to do is press copy and then press ctrl d repeatedly on the keyboard until the dibbers do a full 360 around the ellipse once you've done a full circle you want to remove the ones that are not needed simply select them and hit the delete key and then next we are ready to create our thermostat icon and add the text to the center to create the thermostat icon simply start off with an ellipse move over to the rectangle tool which is shortcut m on the keyboard and then create a small vertical rectangle select both shapes then within the pathfinder tool use the unite option to unite both shapes together using the direct selection tool which is shortcut a on the keyboard select the top two anchor points on the top of the rectangle and using the corner radius handles just round off the corners select the whole entire shape and then go to object path offset path and then you want to offset the path by around five pixels and then press ok while the shape is still selected swap the solid fill over to a stroke use a stroke weight of around two points and then go to object expand to expand the stroke into its own shape select the rectangle tool and drag a rectangle over the top part of the inner shape while that rectangle is still selected press the shift key on the keyboard to add the thermostat or thermometer shape to the selection shift m on the keyboard for the shape builder tool hold down the alt key and just simply drag or draw a line through both shapes and what that will do is that will just remove the top part of that inner shape and then we want to simply add the little dibbers to the side again using the rectangle tool create a small horizontal rectangle press and the keyboard for the direct selection tool 
select the two right anchor points and then using the corner radius handles just round off the right edge and then we want to duplicate the shape all the way down select the whole shape go to object group and then we can position this or use the icon within the center of our ellipse using the type tool add some text inside of the middle ellipse and then move over the thermostat icon which will sit in the center And finally, all that's left to do is to add some highlights to the inner ellipse so it looks a bit like glass. So to do that, select the center ellipse and go to edit, copy, and then go to edit, paste in place. Change the fill color to a white color and then hold down the Alt and Shift key, drag a duplicate ellipse and position it slightly overlapping so you've got like a very thin moon shape select both shapes shift m on the keyboard then hold down the alt key and draw a line through the two bottom overlapping shapes and what you're left with is like a half moon shape next we're going to apply a blur effect to the shape but first select the shape and go to edit copy just so we have a copy of the shape in our clipboard select the shape and then go to effect blur Gaussian blur and then change the radius to something around five pixels and then press OK and then under the transparency panel if you don't see the transparency panel you can go to window and select transparency or use the shift control F10 shortcut and then you want to change the transparency to something like soft light and change the opacity to something like 15 pixels and then go to edit paste in place Again, changing the transparency to soft light and the opacity to, again to around five pixels. And then what you're left with is glass type look. And if you select both shapes and just resize it down just a touch, it just moves it away from the edge. That's it for this week. Hopefully you've learned something new. If you'd like to download the source files for this tutorial, please check the link in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to stick around for more design related content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.